Now let's talk about a story that quite literally takes Indian innovation to new heights that is 32,000 feet above sea level. In a major milestone for India's indigenous defence capabilities, the Defence Research and Development Organisation, the DRDO, has successfully conducted a combat freefall jump using an indigenously developed military combat parachute system or the MCPS. So what does this mean? Let's decode. The test jump was carried out by an Indian Air Force test jumper from a staggering altitude of 30,000 feet, demonstrating the efficiency, reliability and advanced design of Made in India system. According to the Ministry of Defence, the MCPS or Military Combat Parachute System is now the only parachute system in operational use by the Indian Armed Forces that can be deployed above 25,000 feet. A critical advantage in high altitude combat and special operations. Developed jointly by ADRDE Agra and DEBEL Bangalore, the system integrates advanced technical features including a low rate of descent and enhanced steering control, enabling paratroopers to deploy safely, navigate with precision and land exactly at the point on target. Adding to its technological edge, the MCPS is compatible with India's own NAV-IC satellite navigation system. This means the system can operate independently of foreign GPS networks, ensuring secure and uninterrupted operations even during hostile conditions. The Defence Ministry says the success of the MCPS will reduce dependence on imported parachute systems, cut maintenance turnaround time and ensure availability during wartime contingencies. The Defence Minister of India, Mr. Rajnath Singh, hailed the success as a significant milestone for India's indigenous defence capability. DRDO's Chairman, Dr. Samir V. Kamat also congratulated the team, calling it a major step towards self-reliance in aerial delivery systems. Today I am joined by a very special guest, Brigadier Nilesh Bhanot, who is a combat free faller and a special forces officer from 21 Para SF. He is going to explain us what this military combat parachute system is all about. So let's first try and understand the image that is right behind us. What is all there in this image? Can you please explain, Brigadier Bhanot? Yeah, Danvir. Uh, as you can see, this is the military combat parachute system. Uh, the main component is, of course, the canopy, which is uh, clearly deployed and uh, seen here. The next thing is the insulated suit because of the uh, extreme minus temperatures at uh, altitudes of 30,000 feet, you require to have insulation. Then above 12,000 feet, when uh, because of lack of oxygen in the air, you require to breathe in pure oxygen. So you see the helmet with the oxygen mask and it is uh, connected to the oxygen bottles here. Other than this, uh, the helmet has got a night vision device which is mounted. Yeah, and that's what I was to just ask because this image also has a normal parachute and this is the free fall uh, parachute. What is Correct. the basic difference between okay. the two? Okay, so that round canopy which you see, uh, that is the standard uh, parachute uh, system which is there for in mass uh, dropping of uh, bodies, military bodies. And uh, the drops take place from approximately 1000 feet or below. Whereas uh, the uh, the canopy which looks like a wing, it's known as the ram air cano uh, canopy and this is uh, required uh, in com uh, combat free fall uh, roles and uh, uh, it has got more accuracy, more stealth, it has got so much more features. So Brigadier Nilesh, we were talking about and in fact you just explained uh, what is a combat free fall parachute and yeah. you also uh, explained the other parachute which is for normal para uh, shooting. So, why exactly do you require a, f a combat free fall? What, what is it yeah. all about like? That's a very good question and uh, I'm asked this question very often. 
the normal round canopy uh, it dates back to the second world war days with a few modifications and that is used to drop troops in mass right uh, and because you are dropping troops in mass there are number of aircrafts which are involved in it uh, and uh, also you require to drop them quickly so the altitude is also less in in fact if i may interject a yeah. normal para battalion would require how many aircrafts to uh, uh, it depends um, say depends on which aircraft but then you require uh, ranging from 50 to 75 aircrafts oh you my may require God. it's a huge it's a requirement huge, uh, because it is effort. not just uh, soldiers jumping, you require their combat loads also to be dropped, you require tanks, uh, those BMPs to so be 50 dropped. 50 to 70 vehicles. is the yeah. average. Yeah. And it could be more also. It could be more. Yeah, as per the requirement. So, as you were saying that yeah. uh, the combat free fall. Yeah. So, uh, that is the standard parachuting. We also drop uh, the heavy loads, that is RT guns, vehicles, BMPs, those are those uh, small tanks which support the infantry battalion, uh, the para battalion which has been dropped there. So that's why you require a lower altitude and the round canopy. Whereas when you come to the combat free fall system, now this system is uh, used for two uh, types of jumps. One is the HEHO, that is the high alt altitude, high opening and HALO, which is high altitude, low opening. Could you just explain a little bit? Okay. So uh, this canopy if you notice it's shaped like a wing so when it is shaped like a wing after it opens it it uh, functions like a rigid wing because the air fills into the cells and it has a glide ratio so what is a glide ratio for every one feet of drop it moves forward multiple feet depending on which canopy you are using and in nil winds and if you have favorable winds from behind, this can carry you kilometers deep into the enemy's territory. So roughly say if you drop at 32,000 feet, so, how deep can you go? So uh, it could be anything from about 50 odd kilometers to 75 kilometers depending upon the fair winds. 50 to 75 kilometers you can travel yes. with the help of this wing. Correct. Uh, so that is the advantage. That That's the advantage. Now, uh, depending upon the capability of the ca canopy, there are some canopies which has a glide ratio of 1 is to 3. That is, it drops for 1 feet and moves forward 3 feet in nil winds. Okay. Right? But there are advanced canopies which can have a glide ratio of 1 is to 5 or 1 is to 6. So, uh, that's how you... Like, and like the paragliders, it has 1 is to 9. Yes. Something so, on paraglider the is a much larger, larger canopy. Big, yeah. So, uh, this is a smaller canopy. And uh, so that's why, and now with 1 is to 5, with the fair winds, favorable winds, it can carry you till wherever. wherever. I mean, yeah, so I mean, depending upon the uh, strength of the wind. So, on this uh, video wall, we have got uh, a still image. Yeah. Uh, this is an American uh, free faller who's jumping, and this is a video wherein again, American free faller is uh, jumping. So, could you just uh, reorient? You just explained on the DRDO image. Yeah. Could you just explain? as to what all we can see in this image uh, okay. as we understand. yeah. Uh, firstly, I will just explain to you uh, what is when a military free fall jumper uh, comes out of the aircraft, what all is he, apart from the parachute and the dress which he is wearing and helmet, there are other things. Uh, there is a weapon which he is carrying. Uh, also, there is the he's, combat load. He's carrying now, that you can weapon see the here. weapon there yeah, yeah. very clearly. Uh, what we can't see here is the combat load. The combat load comes between the legs. Between the legs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's about 40 to 45 kilos because, you know, they are going deep inside the yeah. enemy territory. They're they carry any and, and everything. And everything. Ration, ammunition, communication, everything which may be required uh, by the soldier there because these are very small uh, teams. Yeah. Uh, okay. What you can see in this photograph is firstly the helmet. Now, uh, there is also provision for night vision device here. The, you wear a protective goggles and he's uh, got this oxygen system which is connected. Uh, this is the navigation radio set uh, you can see here. Uh, I assume behind him is the combat load, combat load and on the right side would be the it, weapon. Is the weapon like, that like one. this, yeah. And on the side here come the uh, oxygen bottles which is required after you leave the aircraft. 
Okay. Okay. So, also, uh, because you are jumping at those altitudes. Suppose so, I will just like okay. to bring in some personal element into it. Uh, you yourself have jumped from what height, Max? Uh, yeah. I have jumped from 30,000. You have jumped from 30,000. Yes. So, 30,000 when you are getting out of the aircraft, uh, uh, what all? What all happens and what happened to you, in fact? Okay. Uh, uh, as a free faller, uh, one thing which we all look forward to is higher the altitude, the better it is. Okay. Because uh, that exhilarating feeling of coming down, you know, uh, when you jump from 30,000, it is almost, uh, uh, almost two minutes of uh, free fall that you get. It's quite so a speed. It is quite a speed and uh, it is one of the best feelings in the world. There is no better feeling that I've ever experienced. Wow. So, uh, that, having said that, it is not all, uh, you know, Hollywood story. Because uh, it is quite a painful procedure the moment you go above 12,000. Because then the oxygen system comes in. Now, before you jump out of the aircraft at 30,000, you're wearing your loads. Okay. Uh, the, about, imagine, you know, you've got a 45 kilo load between your legs. You're connected to all these oxygen systems and all. And then, suppose this oxygen bottle malfunctions in the air the moment you step out of the aircraft. Uh, you will black out because there is hardly any oxygen there. So therefore, we have to do pre-breathing of pure oxygen for depending upon the altitude. Like typically, if you're jumping from 30,000, I would say about one and a half hours, you, there, there are oxygen consoles inside the aircraft and you take in uh, pure, pure oxygen. Pure oxygen. So, and you're connected to it. And last moment before jumping out, you switch off the aircraft console and you switch on your oxygen bottles from the parachute and then you jump. So it is a painful procedure also. It is not all, all that Hollywood. Right? Yes. So that was uh, Brigadier Nilesh Bhanot explaining the nuances of uh, combat free fall. From the skies over Agra to the future battlefields, India's technological leap with military combat parachute system reflects one message. India's self-reliance is India's new altitude.